Okay, here this problems 20 and 21 says solve the inequality. And then this one here also says solve the inequality. The best way to solve the inequalities is if you have zero on one side of the inequality and then you can go from there. So for this particular problem, I'm going to add the 100 to the other side so that I get x cubed minus 4x squared minus 25x plus 100. And then if I want to find the numbers of interest that will cut up the intervals, um, I'm going to need to factor this. And since there are four terms, I'm going to attempt to factor it by grouping. So this side has an x squared in common, leaving me with x minus 4 bring down my minus sign. This side has a 25 in common, leaving me with positive x and a negative 4. And then both of those two terms have an x minus 4 in common, leaving me with x squared minus 25. And I can factor x squared minus 25 into x plus 5 and x minus 5. So if I set each one of these things equal to 0, I will get x equal to 4 x equal to negative 5 and x equal to positive 5. This is going to help me to determine the intervals for the solution. So negative 5 is over here to the left and then 4 would be next and 5 would be next. Now I know this is not properly spaced out but I did want to give myself enough space so that I can make some notations in between each interval. Now there are four intervals here. There's an interval over here which is negative infinity to negative 5. And because this is no bar, then I know that I'm going to be having a parentheses in this interval. This interval is from negative 5 to 4. This interval is from 4 to 5. And this interval is from 5 to infinity. And so what we want to do is we want to test each interval to see which intervals have values that satisfy this equation. Now you can use the other equivalent um, version of the equation, and the best one to use is the one that's already factored with the, a with the zero on one side. So I'm going to be looking at this form of the inequality when I go to check values inside each of those intervals. So for this interval, I'm going to pick a number over here like negative 6. In this interval, in between negatives and positive, it's always nice to pick 0. In here, I'm going to pick 4.5 because that's between 4 and 5. And then over here, I'm going to pick positive 6. And so I only really need to know what the signs are in order to decide whether or not this value is greater than 0, being positive, or if it's less than 0, being negative. Okay. So let's think about it. If I plug in negative 6 in here, you're going to have a negative with a negative, which makes that factor negative. If I plug negative 6 in here, you're going to have negative 6 plus 5, but you take the sign of the bigger number, which would be another negative. And then finally, if I plug negative 6 in here, you have a negative number with another negative number. It's going to be negative. A negative times a negative times a negative is an ultimate big negative, okay? Is a negative greater than zero? It is not, which tells us that that interval, negative infinity to negative five, is not going to be part of our solution. Now let's test the next number, zero. So if I plug zero into this factor, I'm going to get a negative. If I plug zero into that factor, I get a positive. If I plug zero into this factor, I get a negative. A negative times a positive times a negative, positive in the end. And positive numbers are greater than zero. So this interval will work. So I'm just gonna box it. There we go. So then now let's check the next number, 4.5. If I do 4.5 minus 4, I will get a positive 0.5. 4.5 plus 5, I will get a positive 9.5. And 4.5 minus 5, the bigger number is negative, so I'll end up with a negative value there. When I multiply all these signs together, I'll get a big fat negative. And negative numbers are not greater than 0. So this interval will not be part of my solution. 
Now for the last test value. If I plug in six here, I will end up with a positive two. Plug in six there, you'll end up with a positive 11. Plug in six here, and I'll end up with a positive one. If you multiply a bunch of positives together, you will end up with a positive. And positives are greater than zero. So we do get this um, interval to work as well. Now, as far as my final answer is concerned, um, we need to write that in interval notation, which means negative five to four and five to infinity are part of our solution. And what symbol tells us that both sections are part of our solution? That is a union. So we do have to have the union there as part of our final answer. Okay, let's go ahead and try the next problem. Now it's already equal to zero. There's only a couple of things we need to talk about. Here the inequality was a strictly greater than or equal to. I mean strictly greater than or less than. Here you have a less than or equal to, okay? Which means that some of your intervals might have brackets because those values are going to be included. But the first thing I need to do is figure out which values will not be included. And we determine that by looking at our domain and or looking at our um, excluded values. And excluded values come from the denominator. So what I have to do is I have to take my denominator and equal it to zero. Because if this denominator equals zero, the whole fraction is undefined. And an undefined number cannot possibly be less than or equal to zero. So any answers I get from here are going to not be included in the solution. So let's see, if I move over 25, I get positive 25. If I divide by four, I get 25 over four. And then if I take the square root, I get plus or minus the square root of 25 over four, which does simplify into plus or minus five over two. So I have two numbers here, five over two, and negative five over two. So immediately on my number line, I know I'm gonna have negative five over two and negative five over two. I just don't know what other numbers I need to put in here, so I'm gonna hold on that. Now, how is a fraction ever equal to zero? A fraction is only equal to zero if the numerator is equal to zero. As long as the bottom is not zero, we don't really care what the bottom is. The only way a fraction can equal zero is if the numerator equals zero. So let's go figure out what values of that numerator are going to equal zero. So if I factor this, I can get um, negative six and negative three. So then my x values are six and three. And that is will make the that will make the numerator equal to zero, which will make the fraction equal to zero. So these two values are excluded, but these two values should be included. So let's plot them on the number line in order. So first we're gonna have negative five halves, then we'll have positive five halves, then we'll have three, and then we'll have six. And so the intervals over here will be negative infinity to negative 5 half, but because this is excluded, you do not include that point, which means there will be a parenthesis there. Then in here, it'll be from negative 5 halves to 5 halves, but that value, positive 5 halves, is also excluded. So there is no value there. Then we get to 3, so positive five halves to three, but this value is included. So it should have a bracket because of the solid bar or solid dot. And then from three to six, six is also included. So it should have a solid dot or bracket. And then the final um, interval is from six to infinity. So we gotta pick test values in each of these intervals. 
So one here, one here, one here, one here, and one in there. Now for less than negative five halves, that's negative 2.5. So let's try negative three. In between a negative and a positive, we can always try zero. Remember, this is 2.5 and that's three. So maybe try something like 2.7. Then three and six, we could do the number five, and then bigger than six, we could do the number seven, okay? Now what you wanna do is you wanna plug it into the factored version of this response. So if I were to factor the numerator, it would become x minus six and x minus three, and if I were to factor the denominator, it would become two x minus five and two x plus five. And so this is the expression that I'm going to be using when I plug in my values. So if I plug in negative three in here, you're going to end up with a negative. A negative three in there, you're going to end up with another negative. A negative in here is gonna make negative six and negative five is a negative. Negative six and five will also be another negative. So you've got negative, 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 negative. The end result will end up being positive. Is a positive number less than or equal to zero? No, it is not. So this interval will not be part of our solution. Let's move on to the middle section. We're trying zero now. So if I plug in zero there, I'll get a negative. If I plug in zero here, I'll get a negative. If I plug in zero here, I'll get a negative. And if I plug in zero here, I'm going to get zero plus five, which is positive. So I'll end up with, the, there's three negatives here, so I will end up with a negative response. Negatives are less than or equal to zero. So this interval will be included in my final answer. Now let's test the number negative 2.7. Um, so if I plug in negative 2.7 here, or I'm sorry, positive 2.7, the six is bigger and it's negative. So it'll result in a negative. 2.7, again, the negative three is bigger, so it will end up being negative. 2.7, if I double that, it'll be, what will it be? It'll be 5.4, so if I minus five, I'll still end up with a positive 0.4. And here, a positive doubled plus another positive will end up being positive. I do only have two negatives here, which will result in a positive sign, which means that this interval will not be part of my solution because a positive is not less than or equal to zero. Let's try our number five. If I plug in five there, the six is negative and it's bigger, so it'll be negative. If I plug in five here, I'll actually end up with positive two. If I plug in five here, I'll end up with 10 minus five, which is positive. And if I plug in five here, I'll end up with 10 plus five, which is also positive. But I only have one negative there, which will ultimately end up being negative once all the signs have been combined. So this interval will work. And then the last section is seven. So seven minus six is a positive one. Seven minus three is a positive four. Seven, it's 14 minus, nine, minus five, which is a positive and then 14 plus five, which is a positive. So you end up with a positive. Positives are not less than or equal to zero. So this interval will not be part of our solution. So we only get two intervals that will be part of our solution. Negative five halves to five halves, union three to six. Now remember, this is a multiple choice exam. So if you see that the answers are in decimal form, just be sure um, to put your answer in decimal form. And this is the final answer.